The Real Baron Zaya, Volume 2, by Anonymous. These are really long books. I just checked 30 pages. Actually, 60 pages. Baron Zaya and Straw settled into Riften for the winter, taking a cheap room in the slummier section of town. How can you tell it's the slummier section? Baron Zaya wanted to join the Thieves' Guild, knowing there would be trouble if she were caught freelancing. One day in a bar room, she caught the eye of a known member of the guild, a bold young Khajiit named Theris. She offered to bed him if he would sponsor her membership. He looked her over, grinning, and agreed, but she but said she'd still have to pass an initiation. What sort of initiation? Ah, Theris said. Pay up for sweetness. This passage has been censored by the Order of the Temple. Straw was going to kill her. That is a K. Yeah, Straw was going to kill her, and maybe Theris too. What in Tamriel had possessed her to do such a thing? She cast an apprehensive look around the room. But the other patrons had lost interest and gone back to their own business. She did not recognize any of them. This wasn't the inn where she and Straw were staying. With luck, it'll, it'll be a while, or never, before Straw found out. Theris was by far the most exciting and attractive man she had met. He had not only told her about the skills she needed to become a member of the Thieves' Guild, but also trained her in them himself, or else introduced her to the people who could. Among these was a woman who knew something about magic. Katisha was a plump and matronly Nord. Okay. She was married to a smith had two teenage children, and was perfectly ordinary and respectable, except that she was very fond of cats, and by logical interference, their humanoid counterparts, the Khajiit, uh -oh. had a talent for certain kinds of magic and cultivated rather odd friends. She taught Baron Zaya on, invisibil on an invisibility spell, and schooled her in other forms of stealth and disguise. Katisha mingled magic and non-magical talents freely. She used one set to enhance the other. She was not a member of the Thieves' Guild, but was fond of Theris in a motherly sort of way. Baron Zaya warmed to her as she never had toward any woman. And over the next few weeks, she told Katisha all about herself. She brought Straw there, too, sometimes. Straw approved of Katisha, but not of Theris. Theris found Straw interesting, and suggested to Baron Zaya that they arrange what he called a threesome. Absolutely not, Baron Zaya said firmly, grateful that Theris had <coughs> broached the subject in private for once. Excuse me. He would he wouldn't like it. I wouldn't like it. Theris smiled his charming triangular fe feline smile and sprawled lazily on his chair, stretching his limbs and curling his tail. You might be surprised, both of you. Pairing is so boring. Baron Zaya answered him with a glare. Or maybe you wouldn't like it with that country bumpkin of yours, sweetness. Would you mind if I brought along another friend? Yes, I would. If you're bored with me, you and your friend can find someone else. She was a member of the Thieves' Guild now. She had passed their initiation. She found there is useful but not essential. Maybe she was a bit bored with him, too. <clears throat> it would be nice if I remembered the timer every once in a while. 
She talked to Katisha about her problems with men, or what she thought of as her problems with men. Katisha shook her head and told her she was looking for love, not sex. That she'd know the right man when she found him. That neither straw nor theris was the right one for her. Baron Zaya cocked her head to one side quizzically. They say dark elven women are pro-pro-something. Prostitutes, she said, although she was very dubious. You mean promiscuous. Although some do become prostitutes, I suppose, Katisha said <coughs> as an afterthought. <coughs> Excuse me. Elves are promiscuous when they're young, but you'll outgrow it. Perhaps you're beginning to already, she added, hopefully. She liked Baron Zaya, had grown to be quite fond of her. You ought to meet some nice elven boys, though. If you go on keeping company with Khajiits and humans and what have you, you'll find yourself pregnant in next to no time. <coughs> that makes Snowball wonder. What would be the combination of a Khajiit and a Dark Elf? Baron Zaya smiled involuntarily at that thought at the thought. I'd like that, I think, but it would be inconvenient, wouldn't it? Babies are a lot of trouble and I don't even have my own house yet. How old are you, Barry? Seventeen? Well, you're you've a year or two yet before you're fertile unless you're very unlucky. Elves don't have children readily with their with other elves after that. Even so, you'll still be all right if you stick with them. Baron Zaya remembered something else. Straw wants me to buy a farm and marry me. Is that what you want? No, not yet. Maybe someday. Yes, someday. But not if I can, can't be queen, and not if just, not just any queen. The queen of Mournhold. She said this determinedly, determinedly, almost stubbornly, as if to drown out any doubt. <coughs> Katisha chose to ignore this last comment. She was amused at the girl's hyperactive imagination, took it as a sign of a well-functioning mind. I think Straw will be a very old man before someday comes. Barry. Elves live for a very long time. Katisha's face briefly wore the envious, wistful look humans got when contemplating the thousand-year lifespan. Elves have been granted by the gods. True, few ever actually lived that long as disease and violence took their respective tolls. But they could, and one or two of them actually did. I like old men too, Barry said. Katisha laughed. Baron Zaya fidgeted impatiently with Theris. Katisha laughed. Baron Zaya fidgeted impatiently while Theris sorted through the papers on the desk. He was being meticulous and methodical, carefully replacing everything just as he found it. It had broken into a nobleman's household, leaving straw to hover outside as a lookout. Theris said it was a simple job, but very hush-hush. He hadn't ever even wanted to bring any other guild members along. He said he knew he could trust Barry and straw, but no one else. Tell me, what are you looking for? I'll find it, Barry whispered urgently. Theris night sight wasn't as good as hers. Night eye? And he didn't want her to magic up even a small orb of light. She had never been in such a luxurious place. Not even the Darkmoor Castle of Count Seven and Lady Inga where she had spent her childhood compared to it. She gazed around in wonder as they made their way through the ornately decorated and hugely echoing downstairs room but 
Ferris didn't seem interested in anything but the desk in the small book-lined study on the upper floor. St! He hissed angrily. Someone's coming, Barry said. A moment before the door opened and the two dark figures stepped into the room, Theris gave her a violent shove towards them and sprang to the window. Baron Zaya's muscles went rigid. She couldn't move or even speak. She watched helplessly as one of the figures, the smaller one, leapt after Theris. There were two quick silent stabs of blue light, then Theris folded over into a still heap. Outside the study, the house had come alive with hastening footsteps and voices that called out an alarm, and the clank of armor hurried, hurriedly put on. The bigger man, the, a dark elf. The bigger man, a dark elf by the looks of him, half lifted, half dragged Theris to the door and thrust him into the waiting arms of another elf. A jerk of the first elf's head sent his smaller blue-robed companion after them. Then he sauntered over to inspect Berezaya, who was once again able to move, although her head throbbed maddeningly. 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 When she tried to. Open your shirt, Baron Zaya, the elf said. Baron Zaya gawked at him and clutched it close. You're a girl, aren't you, Barry? He said softly. You should have stopped dressing as a boy months ago. You know, you were only dra drawing attention to yourself. And calling yourself Barry... Is your friend Straw too stupid to remember anything else? <coughs> it's a common elven name, Baron Zaya defended. The man shook his head sadly. Not among dark elves, it isn't, my dear. But you wouldn't know much about dark elves, would you? I regret that, but it couldn't be helped. No matter. I shall try to remedy it. Who are you, Baron Zaya demanded. Aye, so much for... Fame. The man shrugged, smiling wryly. I am. Wait. I am Symmetris, milady, Baron Zaya, General Symmetris, of his, uh, of his awesome, terrible, Majesty Tiber Septum. Eyes are Imperial Army, and I must say, it's a merry chase you've led me on. Throughout Tamriel, or this part of it anyway, although I guessed, and guessed correctly, that you'd head for Morrowind eventually. You had a bit of luck. A body was found in Whiterun that was thought to be straws. So we stopped looking for the pair of you. That was careless of me, yet I'd not yet I'd not have thought you'd have stayed together this long. Where is he? Is he all right? She asked in a genuine trepidation. In genuine trepidation? Oh, he's fine for now. In custody, of course. He turned away. You care for him then, he said, and then suddenly stared at her with fierce curiosity out of red eyes that seemed strange to her except in her own seldom-seen reflection. He's my friend, Baron Zaya said. The words came out in a tone that sounded dull and hopeless in her own ears. Symmetris, a general in the Imperial Army, no less, said to have the friendship and ears of Tiber Septim himself. Aye, you seem to have several unsuitable friends, if you'll forgive my saying so, milady, stop calling me that. She was irritated at the general's seeming sarcasm, but he only smiled. As they talked, the bustle and flurry in the house died away, although she could still hear people, presumably the residents whispering together not far off. The tall elf perched himself on a corner of the desk. He seemed quite relaxed and prepared to stay a while. Then it occurred to her several unsuitable friends, he had said, 
This man knew all about her, or seemed to know enough anyway, which amounted to the same thing. What's going to happen to them, to me? As you know, this house belongs to the commander of the Imperial troops in this area, which means to say that it belongs to me. Baron Zaya gasps, and Symmetris looked up sharply. What? Didn't you know? Tisk tisk. Why you are Why you are rash, milady. Even for seventeen, you must always know what it is you do or get yourself into. But the guild wouldn't wouldn't have Baron Zaya was trembling. The Thieves Guild would never have attempted a mission that crossed Imperial policy. No one dared oppose Tiber's septum, at least no one she knew of. Someone at the guild had bungled, badly, and she was now going to pay for it. I dare say it's unlikely that Theris had guild approval for this. In fact, I wonder, Symmetris ex exclaimed, the desk carefully. Symmetris examined the desk carefully, pulling out drawers. He selected one, placed it on top of the desk, and removed the false bottom. There was a folded sheet of parchment inside. It seemed to be a map of some sort. Baron Zaya edged closer. Symmetris held it away from her, laughing. Uh, rash indeed, he glanced. He glanced it over, then folded it and replaced it. You advised me a moment ago to seek after knowledge. So I did, so I did. Suddenly he seemed to be in high good humor. We must be going, my dear lady. He shepherded her to the door, down the stairs and out into the night air. No one was about. Baron Zaya's eyes darted towards the shadows. She wondered if she could outrun him or elude him somehow. You're not thinking of attempting escape, are you? Aye, don't you want to hear first what my plans for you are? She thought that, and sounded a bit hurt. Now that you mention it, yes. Perhaps you'd rather hear about your friends first. No. He looked gratified at this. It was evidently the answer he wanted. Though Baron Zaya... Thought Baron Zaya. Oh. It was evidently the answer he wanted, thought Baron Zaya. But it was also the truth. While she was concerned for her friends, especially Straw, she was far more concerned for herself. You will take your place as the rightful queen of Mournhold. Symmetris expla explained that this had been his and Tiber Septim's plan for, all, for her all along. That Mornhold, which had been under military rule for the dozen or so years since she had been away, was gradually to be returned to the civilian government under the Empire's guidance. Of course, and as part of the Imperial Province of Morrowind. But why was I sent to Darkmoor, Baron Zaya asked, hardly believing anything she had been told. For safekeeping, naturally. Why did you run away? Baron Zaya shrugged. I saw no reason to stay. I should have been told. You would have been by now. I had, in fact, sent for you to be removed to the Imperial City to spend some time as part of Emperor, the Emperor's household. But of course you... But of course you had, shall we say, absconded by then. As for your destiny, it should be, and should have been, quite obvious to you. Tiber Septum does not keep those he has no use for. And what else could you be that would be of use to him? I know nothing of him, nor for that matter of you. Then know this, Tiber Semptum rewards friends and foes alike, according to their deserts.
Baron Zaya chewed on that for a few moments. Straw had deserved well of me and has never done anything. Now, anything? Baron Zaya chewed on that for a few for a few moments, Straw has deserved well of me and has never done anyone any harm. He is not a member of the Thieves' Guild. He came along to protect me. He earns our keep by running errands, and he, he, Secamus raved at her impatiently to silence. I, I know about Straw, he said, and about Theris. He stared at her intently. So what would you? She took a deep breath. Straw wants a little farm. If I'm to be rich, then I would like for one to be given to him. Very well, he seemed astonished at this, and then pleased. Done. He shall have it. And Theris? He betrayed me, Baron Zaya said coldly. Theris should have been should have told her what risk the job entailed. Besides, he pushed her right into their enemy's arms in an attempt to save himself. Not a man to be rewarded. Not, in fact, a man to be trusted. Yes, and? Well, he should be made to suffer for it, shouldn't he? That seems reasonable. What form should... Should said suffering take. Baron Zaya balled her hands in the fist. She would have liked to beat and claw at the Khajiit herself. But considering the turn of events had taken, that didn't seem very queenly. A whispering, er, would twenty stripes be too many, do you think? I don't want to do him any permanent injury, you understand? But teach him a lesson. Aye, of course, Secamus grinned. At this, then his features suddenly set and became serious. It shall be done, your highness, Milady Queen Baron Zaya of Mournhold. Then he bowed to her, a sweeping, courtly, ridiculously wonderful bow. Baron Zaya's heart leapt. Wow, that's a long... This is a very long book. Next chapter. She spent two days at Sakamis's apartment, during which she was kept very busy. There was a dark elven woman named Durellance, who saw to her needs, although she did not exactly seem a servant since she took her meals with them. Nor did she seem to be Sakamis's wife or lover. Drilling, 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 looked amused when Baron Zaya asked her about it. She simply said she was in the general's employ and did whatever was asked of her. With Drilling's assistance, several fine gowns and pairs of shoes were ordered for her, plus a riding habit and boots. Along with other small necessities, Baron Zaya was given a room to herself. Sakamus was out a great deal. She saw him at m most mealtimes, but he said little about himself or what he had been doing. He was cordial and polite, quite willing to converse on most subjects, and seemed interested in anything she had to say. Drilling was much the same. Baron Zaya found them pleasant enough, but hard to get to know. As Katisha would have put it, she felt an odd twinge of disappointment. These were the first dark elves with whom she had associated closely. She had expected to feel comfortable with them, to feel at last that she belonged somewhere with somebody as part of something. Instead, she found herself yearning for her Nordic friends, Katisha and Straw. When Sakamis told her they were to set out for the Imperial City on the morrow, she asked if she could say goodbye to them. Katisha, he asked, I, but then I suppose I owe her something. She, 
She it was who led me to you by telling me of a lonely, dark elven girl named Barry who needed elven friends and who sometimes dressed as a boy. She has no association with the Thieves' Guild, apparently, and no one associated with the Thieves' Guild seems to know your true identity, save Theris. That is well. I prefer that your former guild membership not be made public knowledge. Please speak of it to no one, your highness. Such a past does not become an imperial queen. No one knows but Straw and Theris, and they won't tell anyone. No, he smiled a curious little smile. No, they won't. He didn't know that Katisha knew then, but still... There was something about the way she said it. Straw came to her apartment on the Ooh. Straw came to her their apartment on the morning of their departure. They were left alone in the salon. In the salon getting their hair done. Although Baron Zaya knew that other elves were within earshot he took, he took, he looked drawn and pale. They hugged one another silently for a few minutes. Straw's shoulders were shaking and tears were rolling down his cheeks. But he said nothing. Baron Zaya tried a smile, so we both get what we want, eh? I'm the queen of Mournhold and you'll be lord of your own farmstead. She took his hand, smiled at him warmly, genuinely. I'll write you, Straw. I promise. You must find a scribe so you can write me too. Straw shook his head sadly. When Baron Zaya persisted, he opened his mouth and pointed at it, making inarticulate noises. Then she realized what it was. His tongue was gone. Had, had been cut off. Baron Zaya collapsed into a chair and wept noisily. They cut his effing tongue off. <laughs> but why, she demanded of Symmachus, when Straw had been ushered away. Why? Symmachus shrugged. He knows too much. He could be dangerous. At least he's alive and he won't need his tongue to raise pigs or whatever. I hate you, Baron Zaya screamed at him, then abruptly doubled over and vomited on the floor. She continued to revile him between intermittent bouts of nausea. He listened stoically for some time while Drilene cleaned up after her. Finally, he told her to cease or he would gag her for the journey to the Emperor. They stopped at Katisha's house on the way out of the city. Symmetrus and Drilene didn't dismount. All seemed normal, but Baron Zaya was frightened. As she knocked on the door, Katisha answered the knock. Baron Zaya thanked the gods silently that at least she was all right. But she'd also obviously been weeping in any case. She embraced Baron Zaya warmly. Why are you crying, Baron Zaya asked. For Theris, of course. You haven't heard? Oh dear, poor Theris, he's dead. Baron Zaya felt icy fingers creeping around her heart. He was caught stealing from the com Commandant's house. Poor fellow, but that was so foolish of him. Oh, Barry, he was drawn and quartered this very dawn by the Commandant's order. She started to sob. I went. He asked for me. It was terrible. He suffered so before he died. I'll never forget it. I looked for you and Straw, but no one knew where you'd both gone to. She glanced behind Baron Zaya. That's the Commandant, isn't it? Sakamus. Saka crap. Then Katisha did a strange thing. She stopped crying and grinned. You know, the moment I saw him, I thought this is one for Baron Zaya. Katisha took a fold of her apron and wiped it across her eyes. I told him about you, you know. Yes, Barons, I said, I know. She took Katisha's hands in each of hers and looked at her earnestly. Katisha, I love you, but I'm going to miss you. But please don't ever tell anyone else anything about me. Ever. 
Swear you won't. Especially not Sakamas. And look after straw for me. Promise me that. I'm gonna run out of time.